emisión.net Hello again and welcome to Letter from England, broadcasting for AC Press and the Spanish Evangelical Alliance. This week we're looking at the question of religious belief in the political arena. Some would argue that religion and politics, or faith and politics, have never been very happy bedfellows. Uh, and uh, politicians who've sought to talk about faith, or perhaps even take their own faith into that situation, have either been accused of hypocrisy, in being after the religious vote, uh, or of perhaps even more subversive and therefore uh, suspicious uh, motives. Well, for the first time in Spain's short but successful democratic history, a political party has included a treatment of religious belief in its manifesto. The ruling Socialist Party, with an eye to the next election, explains its decision in the context of religious plurality in modern Spain, and uh, seeing the importance of promoting religious freedom in a mature democracy. This decision was one of the conclusions reached at the party's recent Congress in Madrid, which, as reported recently in AC Press, was attended by, among others, two Protestant representatives. The Socialist Party considers that the 1978 Constitution has managed to implant laicism in Spain and that the process is irreversible. As a consequence, it says, the level of state cooperation with religious confessions must not go beyond the constitutional spirit which guarantees neutrality. Well, they in themselves are fairly grand words within the context um, of the Spanish political situation as we see it today. Uh, officially and constitutionally, uh, Spain is a lay or non-confessional society. Uh, Church-state separation is enshrined in law. Uh, and yet, uh, no one uh, needs to spend very much time in Spain before realizing that the Roman Catholic Church still exercises uh, a great um, influence uh, even within Spanish politics and uh, certainly exerts pressure uh, to maintain its privileged position. Uh, the whole debate um, about the state financing of the Catholic Church, which is a scandal in constitutional terms, uh, continues to rumble. The cultural diversity in Spain today and the complex role of religious belief in that social fabric has led the socialists to attempt to pull people together in some kind of social pact based on mutual respect. Uh, by this they mean that the state will not intervene in the internal workings of religious groups so long as they keep the law and respect established democratic institutions. The party wants to cultivate freedom of speech and belief and quote the moral, ideological and religious autonomy of all citizens within a framework of respect as enshrined in the constitution which is the government's duty to protect and enforce. And it's there that uh, Spanish evangelicals would uh, voice uh, their concerns that the Socialist Party, the Socialist Government indeed, has done very little uh, to chip away at the privileged position of the Catholic Church, and even less perhaps uh, to seek to uh, implant in any meaningful way uh, religious freedom uh, right across the board uh, for, uh, amongst others, Protestants uh, as a religious minority. Uh, the socialists say the state must respect the independence of religious groups but act to prevent religions being used by radical minorities to justify the use of violence or to give legitimacy to actions which are incompatible with human rights and the fundamental tenets of a democratic society. And uh, all evangelicals will of course agree with that. Protestants, Jewish, Catholic and Muslim representatives were invited to, to participate in the Congress debate on this issue. And while the Socialist Party is not about uh, to add religious belief to its policy documents, it is at least recognising the importance of religious belief to many voters. Well, here in England, uh, the situation is a little different. Uh, there is still an official state church, the Church of England. And yet, uh, one doesn't have to spend much time in England to realise that that church seems, uh, anyway, to exercise very little influence on the political scene. Uh, and when a leading politician uh, does uh, suggest uh, that he or she has a, a Christian faith and uh, believes that's important, uh, they're very quickly shouted down. Uh, there was a notorious case a couple of years ago when Prime Minister Tony Blair, having made um, one or two uh, Christian-sounding statements, uh, was asked a question about this by a journalist, and uh, uh, his uh, leading advisor at the time cut across 
him and uh, very quickly interjected, we don't do God. Well, they certainly don't do God any favours uh, with many of their policies. Uh, and yet, even in uh, secular 21st century Britain, uh, the government needs to remember that there are still many faith groups out there, and indeed religious belief uh, of many hues and tones, of course, but religious belief is still very much on the social and therefore on the political agenda. Uh, the rise of, uh, uh, of Islam and its various uh, guises, of course, from uh, simply the numbers of Muslim immigrants uh, now living uh, in Western Europe, uh, in Spain and uh, Britain in particular, uh, in our interests, but also the rise of terrorism associated uh, with Islam, means that the government is wise uh, to consider uh, the importance of faith uh, for a, a large or significant section of the population. Uh, the vast majority of British people still consider themselves and still are happy to uh, uh, describe themselves in uh, census uh, um, forms and so on as Christians. And although church-going uh, is uh, at uh, an all-time low uh, across the country, yet politicians still need to bear in mind uh, that people expect their public figures uh, to uh, maintain at least uh, an appearance of what uh, traditionally uh, might have been called Christian standards, at least when it comes to public conduct or ethics. Uh, that is uh, dying away. Uh, and yet, religious belief is still a force to be reckoned with. And politicians uh, need to, to bear that in mind. The question for Christians, uh, for evangelicals in particular, as they uh, consider how perhaps to lobby uh, government uh, at a national or a local level is not uh, t perhaps to, so much to, as to, to impose uh, Christian beliefs on those who have uh, no such uh, faith, but to model those beliefs themselves uh, as citizens, uh, as voters, and also to uh, seek to encourage politicians uh, to listen uh, to them and to respond uh, to their complaints when these are are genuine and well-founded. Well, thank you again for listening to Letter from England Broadcasting for AC Press. It can be found at emission.net each week. Goodbye for now. Emission.net